What's up everybody? Thank you so much for checking out the video and welcome to Keeping It Real Fishing. You know what we're taking a look at, so let me just get out there guys. <laughs> Very excited today to show you the latest and greatest from Matt Lores. This is the Magnum Stronghill. So guys, uh, as, as amped as this music is keeping me, and uh, I hope you're excited and I want you to be because this is one of the, the finest swim baits that I own and I've seen come out in a long time. Uh, we're gonna have to dispense right about now with the music. Okay, now let's go into <laughs> standard tabletop review mode. Um, let me let you know what you're in store for, guys. It's gonna be a complete review. Those of you who do subscribe, you know my videos tend to go a little long. I'd always like to give you a little bit extra information than not enough. So guys, um, four parts to this video really. First, uh, we're gonna break to the tabletop after the intro. And I'd like to give you a close look at the lure, the intricacies. You could tell even from first glance uh, how beautiful it is. And if you guys are at all familiar with Matt lures, that should come as no surprise. This is the calling card of his lures. It's taxidermy level type stuff. So we're going to take a close look at the lure, some of the details of the construction. Um, moving from there, guys, and the most important part is going to be the action in the water, right? Beautiful lures are nice. But it's just a mantelpiece if it can't swim great and attract those strikes in the water. And I'd like to show you the footage that I have of the uh, strong gill in the water. Then we're going to move to the gear used to fish this. This isn't something I always do, but I decided to just talk to you about uh, what I'm throwing this lure on. Um, this lure falls into an interesting category, and you can kind of go two ways in your approach uh, in the gear that's used. And I'm just going to share with you guys what I'm using. And then last, guys. Um, I actually have the fourth part is a secret technique okay there's a technique that I've been using on some other uh, lures uh, notably the Matt lures a uh, hard gill the smaller version I've employed it with this it's a killer technique and I'd like to share it with you guys if you're not using this you really need to um, all bullshit aside it's something that's going to get you more strikes so guys uh, stay with me stay tuned and uh, let's get into this fantastic new extra large size bluegill swim bait, the Matt Lores Magnum Stronggill. Okay, let's take a look at it. I mean, it's just a, it's absolutely a magnificent lure. It, it is a work of art. I don't need to tell you that. I mean, look at the detail. You, you just don't, and guys, I have quite a collection of swim baits since I get into throwing the larger baits. And I, I say without reservation, and this is coming from me and the whole keeping it real approach is to be critical and to be objective in a, in a sea of, of manufacturers and everything else, whether swim bait or otherwise, the bass fishing uh, industry is just ripe with people trying to sell you things and gimmicks and everything else. Having said all that, I can without hesitation recommend to you really anything from Matt Lors. Uh, I have a number of his baits I'm going to roll out in just a second. I kind of want to drive home the point as to uh, you know, how good of a job he does. For those of you guys who are unfamiliar, those of you guys who know about him, uh, you know, I'm kind of preaching to the choir there, but I'm going to show you this stuff anyway. And uh, that's one of the main things, guys, is you see it's beautiful, and it's not just looks. It's more than skin deep. Uh, his lures are incredible. They all swim great in the water. Uh, they're just they're, they're what I like to call functional works of art. I would understand if you didn't want to fish it, if you want to keep it pretty, but I really, really encourage you to forget about it, get it in the water. I mean, you can see here, this one's getting a little of abuse through my field testing right there. I guess that joint's hitting. I have that happen on some of my other ones. I have years of use on them, and I'll just have you know that sometimes that'll chip there, but it doesn't spread. It doesn't flake off, and it doesn't peel. It stays local, just to that one little area where sometimes that edge there hits that inner uh, metal ring. But uh, anyway, guys, let's, let's uh, take a close look here at the uh, details and talk a little bit about the construction of the uh, strong gill. Details everybody, it's all in the details. Let's bring it in close here. Look at those eyes, those are set eyes. You can't knock those out. Those are molded into it. Uh, you can see the heavy layer of clear coat here. I've been fishing some of Matt's stuff now, some of my earlier ones I've got a good couple years on and all of them still look very good. They may incur a couple chips here and there but they still all look very good. Um, this one right here, guys, I want to speak to the naming of it. It's called the Magnum Stronghill. Where does that Magnum come from? Well, it comes from the fact that this was the one that's been around for years. A fantastic bait. I absolutely also recommend the Hardgill Premier Bluegill Swim Bait. I mean, again, just look at it. It looks as close as you're going to get to the real thing in a, in a hard-bodied uh, Bluegill Swim Bait. But 
when we talk about Magnum, that's what we're talking about right there. Uh, seven inches. This one right here is a slow sink, and my slow sink is coming in at four ounces flat, 4.0. Uh, something that drives from the point a little bit more. You figure a lot of our fish are kind of coming from below or some angle from below, and this presents a very, very formidable meal. But you could see the family resemblance there. It's right on cue to the hard gill. So if you're a fan of the hard gill, you're just moving up in, in size. Everything about it has just been amplified. You see it from the top. It's a very, very beefy lure. This is particular, guys. This is for if you're targeting trophy bass. A lot of people have been using the hard gill for years with success on trophy bass. It's not a small lure. It's five and a half inches. It comes in at about two ounces, depending on your sink rate. I've gotten some of my best fish on it. Some of my biggest fish I've have come on this lure. It, it is the right size in terms of bluegill to attract trophy bass. But if you're if you're gunning for just huge and only huge, take a look at that magnum. And interestingly, I haven't had too much time to field test it, but a few of the fish that I have got have been modest size fish. Uh, they haven't even gotten a giant on it yet, but uh, hopefully, hopefully soon. But anyway, guys, that's where the magnum comes from. The other part of the name is strong. It's the strong gill. And that, that's not just for, you know, the sake of it sounding cool. Um, Matt, of, Matt Servant of Matt Lores has evolved the resin that he's used to pour and construct these. And older versions were called hard gills. And some of his newer baits, uh, an example of that, I'll roll in some others here, would be this guy, like the strong shad. There's purpose behind the nomenclature. The strong is referring to an evolution of the resin. The resin that's used in these is a little bit softer. It's a little bit more forgiving. It's These baits were never really that prone to, to cracking or chipping, but this one has been, uh, it's, a, it's an evolution. Uh, and that's what I love about some of the smaller boutique manufacturers is that they can, you know, do that stuff. They can change it on the fly. It's really customer service oriented. Um, he's making a bait that's more durable for you, right? From a business standpoint, it doesn't necessarily help, but you know, these are not inexpensive lures, but they're definitely, you know, these handcrafted, you know, works of art that have a lot that go into them, many, many hours. And um, when Matt sells you something, he's, he's doing his best to make it a, a very long-term purchase. These are not baits that wear out. The paint on these are known to just keep going and going. Um, I'll just throw it on the side here, guys. You can see I have a couple small chips. That's happened on some of my older ones, too. And it pretty much usually just stays there. This stuff does not flake off or peel. But, uh, yeah, the strong gill is really aptly named. I wouldn't encourage you to throw it on rocks or anything like that, but oftentimes we know that we're trying to get very, very close to cover, whether it is a dock or even, you know, some rocks. And so, you know, Matt knows that, and that's where the bite often is, putting these bluegills in very, very close proximity to things so those fish can pin it, and he's evolved the resin so it's more durable for you and should uh, hold up a little bit longer in the, uh, in the long run. Uh, a couple other features here, guys. You can see the amount of... It's not really a feature, but I'll just show you the amount of joint movement, and he achieves that, but you can see the inside there is kind of, it's carved out. It's, a, it's an extremely concave surface in there. You can see just how much it's carved out there. Same thing with this rear one, and it allows this piece to really get close. You don't have much daylight between them. You can barely see my backboard behind it there, so it's nice. It keeps the lure very, very tight together. Looks more natural, but it gives it an incredible amount of freedom of motion. And then that translates into a lot of motion, a lot of thrashing, and a lot of thump in the water when you can get uh, a little bit more motion like that. The tail, up until now, he's always used toothpicks in the tail. And this one, uh, I was talking to Matt, and he says it's, uh, it's a new system, but it's equally as strong. And there's an adhesive in there, and that's it. We've, we've done away with the toothpicks, and it's in there really good. It's a soft tail. It's a very, very soft tail. It's supposed to hold up to toothy fish pretty well. And uh, if you look at these fins on top, we we're talking about the uh, density of the resin being a little bit softer, but the fins themselves are very, very thick and robust uh, to hold up to those, you know, those errant casts when unfortunately you do hit something. Same on the bottom fins, not thin, very, very thick. This uh, hook hanger here is a rotating hook hanger. The front, the hook can spin freely, which is great on a lure like this. Uh, this is a four ounce lure. Your, you know, those are treble hooks. You don't have that one real big jig hook in there, and so it's always great when you can have a rotating hook hanger. Uh, the rear one, just by design and where it's located, is a fixed hook hanger. Okay. 
And uh, I think that's pretty much it, guys. You can see, uh, aside from that, it's pretty straightforward. The detail on it, though, guys, is really the deal here. Uh, there's just nothing else quite like what Matt does. I've, I've said this in other videos, and I'll say it again. I, I am really a fan of his stuff. Um, the phrase I use is there's, there's Matt lores and there's, there's everything else. Uh, at least in terms of detail. I don't think anyone does these ultra-realistic, taxidermy-like uh, representations quite like Matt. I, I think he really has kind of cornered the market there. He's a gifted artist, and we're fortunate to have him to be able to you know, produce these things. And But I'll say it, uh, I said it before, and I'll always say it, guys, it's not about a pretty face. It's about the complete package. It's about the Lord looking good, but most importantly, it's swimming good. Uh, swimming and action in the water trumps looks any day of the week, but when you can combine them both, something that moves awesome and looks awesome, that's when you have a killer package, and for all you guys who have been fishing Matt Lore stuff for a while, you know that these lures have been proven year over year. They have a history. They have a track record. A lot of the big names have caught some trophy fish on these. They, uh, they really need, you know, they don't need me to endorse it, <laughs> but I'm just, just uh, sharing that with you. And while I got you here, guys, before we move away from the tabletop, I'm about to take you to the water. I'm going to talk to you about the action. I'm also going to show you the in-water action. Just want to show you a few others for those of you guys who may not be familiar with Matt Lores. If you're new to swim baits, really go check out the site, guys. You're, you will be ecstatic with anything he offers. Um, he does also soft plastics uh, or soft plastic swim baits. Same level of detail. You can see the immediate family resemblance. This is a new one called the Hammertail. A lot of kick on there, fins, I mean just everything Everything is accounted for. No stone is unturned with matte stuff. Here's the uh, the hard gill, here's that strong shad, and here's even a, uh, a bass that I have. And you can just see, I mean, this is another thing I like about what, what Matt does is it's, it's not only detail, but it's the number of prey fish. And he has a lot of other stuff too. I'm not showing you everything I have or certainly everything on the site. Uh, he offers, there's perch, there's uh, catfish in his soft uh, lineup, there's, he makes a rat lure, and all of them look this good. I mean, every single lure looks as good as it can possibly look to the real living creature. So, so that's it guys, let me get these out of here. Just wanted to, again, that's really for those of you guys who are unfamiliar with the brands. I've done a few reviews on his stuff, and I, I always like to drive from the point because his stuff is truly impressive. Just like to share with you my enthusiasm for it. And if you're on the fence, I guarantee you, if you ever buy one of his lures, hopefully this one, this one's just about to come out. And um, I guarantee you, I mean, I, I hate that word, but I do guarantee you, if you get a Matt Lures hard bait or soft bait, but particularly his hard baits, these things just are just amazing. So uh, anyway, guys, that's the tabletop here. We've taken a close look at it. Fantastic lure, durable, made for you to be robust in the long run, ultimate swimming action. Uh, ver I don't know if I've talked about the sink rates. This is going to be offered a number of sink rates. A floater, a heavy float, which rides just below the surface, but it's nice because it doesn't sink in case you were to snap it off. You could actually go over and get it. A extra slow sink, this one, which is a slow sink, and then very oftentimes you often, uh, also offers a medium and in some lures, a fast sink. So you have the whole gamut of where you want to fish, the water column, and it's offered in a number of colors. This one that you're looking at here today, guys, this is called the Copper Nose. And I'm guessing that comes from this little thing of copper here. Uh, you can see, you can check out the site. They're all a little bit different all around from the breast coloring to the side coloring. This one has a little bit of yellow back here. And I was really, really uh, fond of this one. So I went with the Copper Nose. And I believe it's offered in four or five other colors, including a pumpkin seed, a red ear, a female gill, male gill, and there's a really bright one called a summer gill. So looking at my uh, timer here, guys, it's already been 10 minutes. I hope you're still with me. I got a lot that I want to show you and talk to you about. Let's get take it right now to the water and talk about the action on the Magnum Gill. All right, guys, let me tell you about the, the action on this lure. Sorry about that. I'm on my canoe going back and forth a little bit. Um, now I'm not overhyping this here, I'm just being real with you guys. The action on this lure is sick. Sick, man. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever fished a hardgill, uh, Matt Smaller bait. It's very much akin to that. We're really just looking at a lure that's been stepped up. But bumping it up from a 2 ounce lure to a 4 ounce lure. Bumping it up from I think a 5.5 to a 7 and just you can see how meaty it is. 
it puts so much pulse through the rod tip. So watch my rod tip here. Hopefully I can zoom in and show you. We'll cast it out and I'm going to wake it just so you could really see. Look at my line dance. Look at that rod tip. Now keep in mind, this is a heavy action swim bait rod. So it takes a decent amount of energy to get that thing to dance like that. This isn't your traditional, you know, like seven foot medium heavy. Um, one of the things I love about this lure is that it's, when I'm fishing it, I know without question the fish are aware of it. Like right now I'm getting into low light. It's summer. I have tons of, of deep, submerged, very dense grass beds. And I am absolutely confident. Even, you know, bring it up, those fish might be down in five, even ten feet down of water in those beds. They know this lure is coming up overhead. I mean, bear in mind, these fish find bluegills, which don't have any joints and they don't put out this kind of pulse. This thing, every cast you make, it's never going to be a question of, ah, I wonder, I wonder if the fish are aware of my lure. You know, you fish a lot of soft plastics, you bring worms through, whatever, that's one thing. This, the fish are aware of it. That's a given. It, the question is whether or not, you know, they're looking for this and the aggressive action, if they're going to come up and strike it. But uh, another thing also, guys, is at night, the amount of pulse that this thing puts out. Um, you just have to fish it, you know, you just have to fish it. There's a lot of jointed baits out there. I have a lot of the big jointed swim baits, but I could tell you the, the smile that came on my face the first time I cast this out there, I was like, you've got to be kidding me. Uh, just the amount of energy that imparts through the rod is serious. And, and I think that's kind of like a, it goes both ways. It could be a double-edged sword. One is I think it transmits so much energy through the water that would not be normal for like a bluegill. Even a large bluegill, they're quiet. They don't have joints. They're not putting out that extreme thump. So I think that in a lot of cases, all but the biggest bass might feel this kind of pulse through their lateral line and be intimidated because it's probably putting out an equivalent of in terms of real size fish a much larger fish you're talking maybe i don't know a 14 or an 18 inch fish that's changed direction a few times or you know thrashed its tail that's probably the amount of energy pulse wise this is putting through the water so uh, even though i've gotten a couple small fish on it i think that the what a lot of people like to call the swim signature so not only visually but you know kind of that energy that it puts through the water sends the message of a massive meal a massive bait that's thrashing around in, in distress and that, you know, kind of being funneled down into those weeds and into those grass beds, I'm highly optimistic. I haven't had a ton of time to fish this yet, but I'm highly optimistic that the fish that I'm looking for, anything five pounds plus, are going to pick up on that and are going to recognize that only a very large meal can put out that kind of thump. And if they're in the mood for the bluegill, if they're in the mood, you know, for that aggressive strike, that they're going to come up and nail it. <laughs> As the name suggests, for those of you guys who maybe don't have any swim baits, I'll just speak to you for a minute. The action is passive. So just like I'm moving it in my hand here, you don't have to do anything. You can if you want. You can do twitches, you can speed up your reel, you could, you know, stop it and pop it and do all sorts of other things. But one of the most successful retrieves is a slow, steady retrieve. You, you can't go wrong with that retrieve. Um, and, and that's pretty much it. The action is built into the bait. Uh, now, depending on what sink rate 
you're interested in. It's going to allow you to do different things. The slow sync, I'll just speak to that one. That's what I have here is very dynamic. The slow speak, if I slow sync, if I keep my rod tip high and I go pretty quick, I can keep that as a wake bait, albeit a fast one. It's going to be more of a reaction style lure. Uh, Matt offers all the sync rates uh, and even some kind of in-between ones, a floater, a heavy float, I really like the heavy float, an extra slow sink, a slow sink, and there's often a medium and sometimes even a fast sink. These lures are not inexpensive, okay, and we're going to talk about, or maybe, I don't know how I'm editing the video, maybe we've already spoke about the, uh, the value proposition, being that's a handmade lure, but I think for a lot of us, it, it may be your most expensive lure. I will say this, guys, if you're going to get it, it's a fantastic lure. I understand the apprehension of losing it. I actually did have one of these pop off on me during my field testing. Um, the floater or the heavy float is an excellent choice. And I might recommend to you the heavy float because if you have one that's a floater, obviously you, you can't lose it. It's not going to sink down. But more importantly, that heavy float requires very, very little weight to make it an extra slow sink and just a little bit more weight to make it a slow sink. You can accomplish that with larger hooks, uh, bigger, well, probably not the split rings. Those are pretty big. You can get some suspend strips. You can put on a little bit of lead tape. You can do various things to get to achieve the desired sink rate that you want. But that's the benefit of always getting a floater or the heavy float is that you can always transition. If you want to make that a slow sink, if you're on a, on a body of water, or the conditions are such that that's what's applicable, you can do it versus like myself here, this is a slow sink model. There's nothing I could do to keep this on top rather than keeping my rod tip high and doing that really fast retrieve. So for all of you guys out there who maybe want one, but you know, based on the price, maybe you're looking to get just one, it's gonna be kind of your, uh, your pride and joy bait. I would recommend the, uh, the float or the heavy float. Once you get into lures of this category, these uh, these jointed hard baits that employ treble hooks, um, it's it's really kind of a, a conundrum. There's two ways to approach it in terms of the gear that you, that you use. I'll share with you, with you guys what I use. I like to err on the side of a softer setup, and I know a lot of people don't. Um, I'll reference the uh, the famous Butch Brown, you know, who was so successful on something like the Depths 250, and he has the exact opposite approach. He has a very very stout rod. And uh, he employs the, the tactic of, once you get that bite, just horsing them in as fast as possible and just limiting the time of the fight. Um, I'm not crossing paths with, with fish like that, but uh, it seems like every time I try that, I've, I've always ended up on the wrong side and the fish has gotten away. So uh, what I like to do, and almost you know, akin to with traditional fishing, using a crankbait, uh, I like to go with a softer setup. This one here, guys, is a swim bait rod rated at one to five ounces. So I'm at the upper end of that rod. This one here is a moderate fast action, so it has a lot of flex through the blank. It's almost acting like a big crankbait stick, and I fish it on mono. I'm fishing this one on actually very heavy mono, 25 pound mono. So it's all about the flex in the system for me, and my hope is that I can cushion those hooks such that if that fish jumps or makes a run or does whatever, it's not gonna get off. Now again, that's not the right way to do it. There's no right or wrong way. The opposite philosophy would be to go with a, uh, the next level up in terms of rods, to go with that kind of stage two, um, and so rather right like the one to five or the one to six ounce range, you'd be looking at like the three to eight or the four to 10 ounce range, uh, the extra heavy rods and um, probably still running mono, but just getting them in as fast as possible because you don't have a lot of play in those rods because they are so stiff. Uh, time is of the essence and you just want to grind them in using that extra powerful rod. Don't let them turn their heads and just fast as possible into a net. So uh, either way guys, uh, like I said, I just happen to employ the, uh, the softer option. I like to, uh, I guess you could say finesse them in, if you could say that in swim bait fishing, and uh, just give those hooks uh, a little bit more cushion when that fish's mouth. Yes, indeed, secret technique time, guys. <laughs> just kidding. Not so much a secret, I'm sure some of you do this, but check it out, it's one of my favorite retrieves. So if we can zoom in on the hat cam, I'm doing this on the slow sink. This really works even better on like kind of the uh, super slow sink or the heavy float. You want to keep it close to the surface, just kind of wake it nice and slow, and then that. Just give it a little pop. Just like that. Don't go crazy with it. Don't go all shamu and, you know, ripping it out of the water a couple feet. Just simulate like a bluegill that was at this top and something chased him out. And he just kind of had to evacuate for a second. 
That is absolutely killer. Uh, I can't tell you how many times you get a strike right after doing that. Bring it up to the surface. So you're waking it. You're right there below the surface. All right? You're not cracking it yet, and then boom. See that there? I didn't even hear that one. It wasn't audible, but it sent out those ripples. Here, do it again. Nice. Just trying to simulate nature. Now, that was a bad one. I caught a weed. So that's it, guys. Uh, like I said, I'm just messing around with the secret technique. Um, but I, I, I kid you not, if you aren't employing that in, in any of your jointed baits, you know, of course, this doesn't apply just to this bait, but anything that you can keep on top periodically, and this is, doesn't matter clear water or whatever. In clear water, it looks like that moment of evacuation, that fleeing moment, whatever it is. But then particularly in areas where there's grass and things like that, you're sending out that pulse. But then also, every so often along that cast, you're sending out an audible. Right, so there's that lateral line, and then there's literally the audible of the, the water splashing, and it is a seriously uh, devastating technique. I almost always employ it. Um, it just it seems to have no downside uh, in terms of the fish that being a trigger for the fish. Uh, like I was saying before, just like hitting a, a square bill off a piece of wood, or you know, like these are rapalas now that have that evasive maneuver. Slow and steady sometimes is where it's at, but a lot of the times pop it out of the surface and and watch it's reluctant to say guarantee but i can almost guarantee you you do that enough you're gonna get some vicious strikes right after you pop it out of the surface i'd love to get one right now and show you we're on top And this works a lot better with a uh, braid. Ooh, I feel that pump. If there's one thing that I can impart to you guys, one thing, you see how beautiful the lore is, you see the craftsmanship. Um, I, don't, I don't have to tell you that, that speaks for itself. But, you know, what I want to impart to you is, before you put down a chunk of change like this on this uh, lure, how does it fish, right? You can't exactly rent these things and test it out. Let me, let me say that that's the one thing I want you to take away from this video, is that this thing has an absurd amount of pump through the rod tip, if that's what you're looking for. If you're looking for a subtle bait, this is not it. If you're looking for that big bluegill profile, if you're looking for a monster bass, basically, if you're on the hunt, there's a lot of great big bass lures out there, I have a lot myself, but the bluegill profile with such detail and just the way the line just... I, I, all I can say is, guys, I, I, I think I've made this analogy right in the video, but it's akin to like an extra large chatterbait that's on steroids. It's just bum, 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 bum. It's like someone's down there with a hammer just smacking the end of your line. And that's on mono. For those of you guys who like uh, fluoro, I can imagine it's even you know more pronounced. And uh, I fish a lot of stuff on braid to a liter. I'm not doing it here just because I've been so afraid to, to lose this, but I can't imagine what it feels like on braid. So that's it though guys, that's the main thing to take away. If you're looking for a lord to make the fish, you know, to call the fish, I think is probably where this thing excels best, um, is to get those fish to be aware of it. Uh, weedy areas like this, um, at night, uh, this is just a lure that the fish cannot ignore. Doesn't mean that they're always going to strike it, but you have the confidence when you throw it that the fish 100% know that that thing is there. They're going to look up, they're going to see what the hell is that, and then it's, then it's the question, you know, are they going to come up and attack that big, big bluegill? And uh, I haven't got a lot of strikes on it so far, but that's, that's okay because a lure like this falls into the classic big bait philosophy. I'm not looking for a lot of strikes. I'm looking for the strike, if you know what I'm saying.